Dear students, we are back with our class on geometric design. We have been discussing about the various cross sectional elements which needs to be provided on any of the road system depending on the category of that particular road. In the previous interaction, we talked about four elements, the curb which are basically used for the demarcation purposes as a safety device. We talked about the guardrail and that is again a safety device which needs to be provided. And then finally, we talked about two of the elements which are there on the sides of a carriageway and shoulder which are side slopes and the side drains which fall under the road margin conditions and these are the four things which we have discussed. Now today, we are going to talk about a specific element and that is bicycle facility. In many of the cities, you will find that the traffic of bicycle is quite high and specifically in those small cities or medium sized cities which are having the lot of agricultural economy around those particular cities, you will find that the bicycle traffic is quite high even on the roads which are taking the traffic in and out of a particular city. In that scenario, the discussion on the bicycle facilities becomes quite important. Let us look at what type of bicycle facilities can be there and that is being shown in this slide by way of the various photographs. When we look at the one, what is being shown is that there is a, a space which is being marked by a bicycle and this particular utility is an exclusive utility being provided or a facility which is being provided for the bicyclists here. There is no other traffic which is probably going to be there even on a side road as this particular photograph depicts. But when we talk about the photograph number two, what we find is that a texture is being used, it is being made green along with the sign that it is for the bicyclist. It has been segregated here, it is basically a separation by way of two parallel lines and a hatching on that. So, this type of a separation is there with respect to a bus lane or a taxi lane. On another side, a carriageway is there on which the traffic is moving and again a separation is being done by way of the parallel lines being provided with the hatch as well as the metal bollards. So, further safety has been ensured on this side. If I look at third one, then what I found is that there is a bike lane which is being separated by the carriageway by way of the provision of a straight continuous white line and that is how the space of the carriageway is being demarcated for the specific usage of either for the bicycle or for the other traffic which is moving there. If I look at the fourth one, here the curb stone has been used so as to separate the bicycle track with respect to the carriageway on the other side and on other side of this bicycle track is a footpath. So, there is a possibility of providing cycle tracks in this way also. If I look at the fifth one, then what I found is that the bicycle track is being provided on which number of bicyclists are moving and it has been segregated by way of this open area or a verge with respect to the carriageway on the other side. So, the total segregation is there here in this particular case. And if I look at the sixth one, then this is a sort of a bicycle track being provided say between the cities where the only the bicyclists are going to utilize it. It is provided at some distance away from a main carriageway. So, a main carriageway may be somewhere here on this side. And these bicyclists you will find that they are moving at a very high speeds maybe 20 kilometers per hour or 30 kilometers per hour because there is no another interaction here and they feel safe while driving that much fast. So, when you are looking at these different type of scenarios, so let us first of all talk about that what can be the type of classification of these bicycle facilities. Now, the classification of these bicycle facilities can be segregated cycle tracks or the cycle lanes which are based on the IRC 11 or on the basis of the placement which is there of the bicycle facility and the type of separation which is being provided by way of uh, any of the physical feature or marking etcetera, 
they can also be defined as adjacent bicycle facility or separated bicycle facility or segregated bicycle facility. So, if I go back then what I can show you is that this is a segregated one. So, here the segregation is there. When I talk here then this is an adjacent case, when I am talking here then this is a separation case. So, these type of things can be there and when we said segregated track then this is a segregated track which can be utilized by the bicyclist totally segregated track or it can be a simple bicycle lane and this can also be defined as a simple bicycle lane being provided here. So, these are the possibilities which are there and of course, the possibility that all of the vehicles are on the same carriageway is always there if these things are not being implemented. Now, when you talk about this segregated cycle track, what are the unique features of a segregated cycle track are being discussed here. The very first thing is that they can be provided on an arterial or sub arterial roads in an urban area. The reason being that on these particular roads the speed is quite high and if you do not have the segregation of the motorized vehicles and the lot of cyclists who are there on that particular carriageway, then it may cause a hazardous interaction and we want to omit that and that is where and, and the other way is that these particular roads they have a total access control where the cyclists may need to get in and out of the system again and again. So, that is also being ensured by way of the segregation of these facilities. They can be provided between the footpath and the carriageway as uh, I have shown you or it can be between the footpath and the street parking. So, that can be another possibility. So, I can have a say footpath here. So, this is my footpath and this much space is being dedicated here for cycle and this one is being dedicated for parking. So, I may have the vehicles standing here and there is a carriageway on this side on which the vehicles are moving up and down in this form. So, that way is also a possibility. When we are providing these uh, facilities, they can have a slope of 1 in 12 to 1 in 20. The desirable widths are 2.5 meters to 5 meters depending on the flow, how much is the flow and depending on the directional movement. So, if you are talking about a bidirectional then obviously, you need to have more of the widths and if the traffic or the bicycle traffic is quite high or the flow is quite high then also that may be a requirement. The another issue is that when we are talking about these type of segregation then is it only on the horizontal level or it is also on a vertical level and that is what it talks here. It says is that the track of the cycle is 50 mm to 100 mm above the surface of the carriageway. So, if I have the carriageway here and I am going to provide say just along at the edge of this the cycle track, then this cycle track is going to be at a height of 50 to 100 mm like this. And if I am going to provide a footpath on the other side, then again this footpath is roughly 50 mm above the cycle track surface and in total if you talk about the footpath then it is going to be 150 mm above the surface of the carriageway. So, this type of a vertical separation is also usually done if you need to ensure more of the safety feature of these movements of different type of road users. When we talk about the cycle lane, some of the aspects are going to remain same, but some are different. The first one is that they are being provided on the collector roads because that is a road which is a, a sort of a distribution system takes the traffic from local streets and gives it to the sub arterial and arterial. So, that is a thing which can be there. They are again placed to adjacent to the footpath or the carriageway or parking on either side of the carriageway. Slope remains the same in this case also as 1 in 12 to 1 in 20, but the widths are different. They are 1.5 to 2.5 meters, quite less as compared to 2.5 to 5 meters in the case of track and the level of this cycle lane remains the same as that of the carriageway. So, it is more of a adjacent condition which will be there even if it is marked separately on that surface. One thing which is usually being found is that there is going to be the movement of the cyclists on a common surface where lot of vehicles are there, all type of road users are using that particular space. 
and this is going to happen in any of the access road in any of the road which otherwise is there in a city if these type of uh, uh, facilities are not being exclusively provided for the bicyclists. One thing which is being expected is that these bicyclists they are going to move around the edge of the carriageway or adjacent to the footpath or the parking if it is being provided on the side of the uh, footpath. The slopes remains the same, but because it is a mixed condition there is no width being specified in these cases. And the level of cycle lane is going to be same because the space which you are going to utilize is the same carriageway which is being provided for even the motorized vehicles or any other road user as such. Here the three things which we talked in the starting when we were talking about the classification of the cycle facility in terms of the provision and the location and the type of separations etcetera. The adjacent is nothing but it is uh, one which is being provided along the vehicular carriageway being marked by a white continuous strip separated is the one which is being provided in the side of the vehicular carriageway, but separated by either the curve stone or the parallel line markings or the hatchings or the bollards or the cones and the segregated one is usually away from the vehicular carriageway and that separation which is being provided between the two carriageways one used for the motorized vehicle another being used for the cyclist can be either paved or unpaved and that is how the two separations or two segregations can be achieved. When we are talking about these spaces whether we should provide 1.5 meters or we should provide 2.5 meters and also the things. One thing which is to be taken into consideration is the dimensions of the vehicles which are going to be there or here in this case we are talking about bicycles. Along with bicycles we are also looking at the cycle rickshaw. So, what are the possibilities let us look at that. In the case of length the bike length is or the bicycle length is roughly around 1950 mm, but when we talk about the cycle rickshaw it is 2200 to 2600 mm changing from passenger to goods cycle rickshaws which are there. The height is almost same in all these cases which is 1200 mm and that is the reason why we have talked about a railing which was 1100 mm high from the top of the surface of the median and footpath, but if the cycle is there then you need to add something more here and that was 150 mm which is going to be there. If you look at the width, width is ranging from 750 mm to 950 mm depending on whether it is being used by only a passenger or it is also being used to carry certain goods. In the case of cycle rickshaw it is again varying from 1000 mm to 1400 mm the reason being the same that what is being carried. When we look at the design speed in the case of design speed it can vary as as low as 5 kilometers per hour and it can be somewhere in a range of 15 kilometers per hour going to a high value of 20 kilometers per hour even it is being observed if you are having a totally segregated cycle track then it may even go to 30 kilometers per hour also which becomes quite a high speed. But when you are looking at the stability of the cycle then 12 kilometers per hour is being defined as a stable cruising speed of a bicycle. Okay, so, that is the speed which usually we should try to provide and the, the design should be such that it can be achieved. Let us look at in this particular designs which are being given here the, the side views, the front views etcetera. The first one is for a passenger condition. So, the cycle is being used by a person. So, this is going to be the length, height is constant, but the width is going to be with respect to either this or this. So, that is the width which we are going to talk here and that is what we talked that what is uh, going to be the width of uh, a bicycle or a cycle rickshaw uh, as two entities. But when you are talking about when it is being used for goods then the length is not going to change a much in that, but yes if say it has uh, the gas cylinder being placed on both of the sides then this width is going to be more than the width which otherwise would have been there with respect to the handle of the cycle. So, that is how the things are going to change. When we look at here the length of cycle rickshaw which is being used for a passenger or is being used for a goods then there is going to be a change in that though the heights are going to remain the same. 
So, that is how we are going to try to look at that how these are going to make an impact in terms of the flows on the road, in terms of the space being occupied and all of those things. Now, one important thing which needs to be looked at is because all of these bicyclists they are vulnerable, if anything happens they can fall. So, we need to look at it what type of clearances can be provided. Now, when we look at these clearances, we can say that this is an obstruction here and this obstruction is being defined by way of the height of that obstruction. And when we are looking at the total space which is being occupied by a say bicyclist and this lower level when the paddle is being moved is coming to this one, then this should be clear than the obstruction which otherwise is there. So, the height of the obstruction and the placement of the obstruction is going to define that what type of clearances needs to be provided, whether the cycle is being used by a person or it is also being used to carry certain goods and the same is the case when you are talking about the cycle rickshaw. And that is where the classification of these have been talked in terms of adult touring bike or adult touring bike or with goods or passenger rickshaw, goods rickshaw or modified goods rickshaw and all of those things are there. So, what type of clearances are going to be there if the obstacle height is 0 to 50 mm? In the case of bike, it is being defined as 0, but in the case of cycle rickshaw, it is defined as at least 250 mm of a clearance should be there. If the height of the obstacle is between 51 and 150 mm, then even for the bicycles also this should vary between 125 to 325 mm depending on what are the heights. But in the case of cycle rickshaw it is a constant value. There are possibilities that there are different features which are being provided on the side of the cycle track. Say there is a pole, there is a wall on the side, there can be a parking area, there are hedges, there are trees or ditches. In all of these cases the clearances are going to vary and these clearances have been defined for both the bicycles as well as for the cycle rickshaws. So, it is minimum 325 and can be as high as 1000 mm in the case of ditches or the side drains or the trees. Now, the another thing which we need to look at is the width of the pavement which needs to be provided. So, it is going to be dependent on that what way the traffic is moving, what type of a facility is being provided here. Say if we talk about the segregated two lane cycle track, then minimum value is being defined as 2200 mm. But if there is a cycle track and a footpath combination, it can vary between 3000 to 4000 mm. But if this combination is there as far as possible, they should not be taken together for a length more than 40 meters and we should try to have a separation of these movements also. If there is a painted cycle lane means a uh, continuous white strip is being provided and we are demarking it, then it says that it is going to be 1.2 meters or 1200 mm usually being provided on the collector roads as we discussed previously too. If you have a bidirectional traffic, then in the case of bidirectional traffic, we are not going for these smaller values, we should have at least 3 meters or 3000 mm. But if the pedestrians are there, then we can increase it to 3.5 meters or 3500 mm. When there are mixed lanes and there is a sharing of the carriageway, then we have to see that how these things can be fixed on so that they remains conducive and comfortable for all the users. Now, when you are talking about a track which is segregated in nature, then it is always good that we provide a shoulder on the side of it. And we are talking about the shoulder, then this should be 1 meters on either side of the track. Then as we said that the height of the bicycle is 1200 mm, so, so as to make uh, safe movements at least 1100 mm high it should be there above the surface which can be any type of uh, surface being provided. If we are being providing a cycle track on the bridges uh, and it is very near to the railing or the bridge railing or the parapet wall then in that case it should be increased by 150 mm more that means now you are going to provide a height of 1250 mm. Verges can also be there because these verges are used to uh, provide the various utility items and this can be minimum 0.75 meters wide and desirably 1 meters wide. And this can also be used as a separation space between the carriageway which is being used by motorized vehicles and the carriageway 
which is being defined for the movement of cycles and that is where this can work as a separator too. Now, when we are moving, when we are just riding a bicycle, then how much distance is visible to us? The minimum distance shall be 25 meters, but then it is also dependent on the gradient of the track or the lane at which it is being provided. If it is more than 1 in 40, then the minimum value is 60 meters. So, it changes from 25 meters to 60 meters if we are having a gradient more than 1 in 40. So, that is one thing which we need to take into consideration. Safety also needs to be ensured by way of the illumination on the road, on the cycle path as well as at the junctions or intersections. So, if that is the case, then what amount of illumination should be there is being defined and what it says is that the minimum 40 lux should be there if you are talking about the horizontal illuminance. But when you are talking about illuminance at a height of 1.5 meters above the carriageway that is on vertical direction then the minimum 20 lux has to be there. And when we are talking about along this track the locations where these poles have been provided through which the illuminance has been given then maximum 20 meters shall be the spacing of those things. And when we are looking at the height, then the height at which this is being provided. So, we are going to provide it say here. So, at this form. So, this is going to be 6 meters from the surface and this overhang is 0.5 meters and that is where the bicycle person is going to move here on this particular surface. So, that is how this is being ensured. So, the people are going to be visible to other road users. Let us talk about few other things in terms of the geometric features and the two type of geometric features which are usually there. One is a horizontal alignment, another one is a vertical alignment. Now, in the case of horizontal alignment, the important thing which comes up is the radius of a horizontal curve and this radius of a horizontal curve is being defined as a minimum 10 meters. But again, if there is a gradient which is more than 1 in 40 that then that needs to be increased to 15 meters. So, that is a change which is going to be there. But when you talk about the segregated cycle track because of the effect of the speed because the speed on these segregated cycle tracks is going to be higher the turning radius is being defined further up as 30 meters. So, we have three values 10, 15 and 30 meters depending on the condition in which the cycle facility has been provided. Coefficient of friction is another important thing and that is used when we talk about the various geometric design elements like in terms of the radius with respect to the speed etcetera. And there the factor which is defined for the cycle tracks is 0.3. When we are going to have the movement on a curved section, then there is going to be a centrifugal force which acts outwards and that is where there is a requirement that we should provide some widening here. So, this is a widening space being provided and that widening space shall be 0.51 meters per lane. So, if suppose you have provided a lane as 1.2 meters wide and you have 2 lanes, then it is going to be 2 into 0.51 meters. And when you are looking at the cruising speeds and we talked about the stable cruising speed as 12 kilometers per hour, say if you are looking at these things, then E1 in that case the widening of cycle lanes that becomes necessary for all turning radii which are less than 120 meters if they are being provided in that sense. Now, when somebody is riding a bicycle, then the person may not be just sitting straight. Then what may happen is that you have a bicycle like this and it is being connected and then there is a say a handle here and a we have a mechanism of uh, driving it and there is a seat here. So, the person is going to sit here on this one so as to drive this particular bicycle. So, what is this angle? Are this person going to sit at 90 degrees with respect to the horizontal or the person is going to make an angle like this? So, what it says is at a cruising speed of say 12 kilometers per hour, the person is going to lean forward and that is where the person is going to be on this stage and this is 18 degrees or if I take it with respect to horizontal then it is 72 degrees 
the angle which is going to be there. So, that is how the designs are probably looked at. When we talk about the vertical alignment, then in the case of vertical alignment, the possibilities are that you are going this manner or you have the conditions where you are going this way. So, you have a summit curve and this is defined as a valley curve. So, the movements are like this say. In these cases, the minimum radii is 200 meters for the summit curve and 100 meters for the valley curve. This is what is being defined. But when you are going in the longitudinal direction and there is a increase in the height because you are in a vertical alignment framework. So, considering the level differences, the recommended slopes have been defined. So, if the level difference is only 1 meter, then we can probably have a bit steeper one. So, we can see that we are going to provide something like this, but as it keeps increasing above the 1 meter, say it is 2 meters or going even up to 5 meters, then we should try to provide a lesser slope in this case. Another thing is even if you are providing this lesser slope, this is higher and this is lesser one, but if it keeps going continuously say for a kilometer or so, then that is probably also again going to create a problem. And that is where if the heights are something like 5 meters or more, then resting places of 25 meters long, they needs to be provided at intermediate locations. And the way it is being done is that here, this is being created as a horizontal for that resting space. And then again a slope is going to be there. So, when we say that the person is uh, just using a bicycle going on a gradient and this, this length needs to be restricted because the person is using his or her own energy, then that is where the maximum length is also being defined. And this maximum length of the grade is x square by 10, where x can be taken in terms of 1 in x gradient. So, if suppose it is 1 in 20, so it is 20 square by 10, that means 400 by 10 is 40 meters is going to be if you are talking about a gradient of 1 in 20 and then you have to ease out and again you can provide a gradient. Now, another safety which needs to be ensured is on intersections or the junctions. Now, when there are lot of traffic which is there of the bicycle uh, movements, then we need to provide the dedicated space for the movement of the bicyclist which can be textured in different colors and can be marked by way of a marking in terms of the bicycle and being separated by way of providing continuous strip. But when you come to the intersection, then a priority needs to be given and that is where we are going to provide a bicycle box here in front of the vehicles and the priority goes to the bicyclist to cross the junction. And then in that case, whatever signals have been provided here they need to be synced with respect to the movement of bicyclist and then the movement of the motorized traffic. So, as to ensure the safety of the bicyclist, that means they have to go this way, this way or they go straight. So, once they have done it, then the rest of the traffic can start moving. Now, another case can be like in this photograph is what it shows is that there is a also a movement of the pedestrians. And there can be two different designs. In this design, what you find is that if the traffic is coming from this side, then the bicycle box is being provided just before the pedestrian zebra crossing. Sometimes it can also be provided on the other side of the zebra crossing. That means, in this case, first of all, the priority goes to the pedestrians and then it goes to the bicyclist and then it goes to the motorized vehicle. But if suppose this has been provided on the other side, then the movement of bicyclist and the movement of the pedestrians can be controlled simultaneously with the same phase and the rest of the phase can go to the motorized vehicles. So, that there are different designs in which we can provide these facilities. Here a very comprehensive way is being shown where what you find is that the movement is there in these cases or at this particular intersection and here all these green patches they are defining the way the bicyclist can take a turn or move straight or whatever the type of movement is required can be done in a given manner. And here what you find is that in this case, this bicycle box is ahead of the 
pedestrian movement. So, this is uninterrupted movement which is going to be there for the bicyclist in this case. Okay, so, uh, that is the way we can provide these facilities. Now, one thing which is going to be there at our junctions is that there is a possibility of the combinations. So, you have arterial distributor access streets versus again an arterial distributor access streets. So, of course, when you talk about an arterial and arterial certain combinations have been defined. It says we can go for a roundabout, signalized crossings, gate separated crossings or grade separated crossings for the cyclists along the arterial roads. But when you are having a combination of arterial and distributor, then in that case uh, again we can have uh, uh, the three type of things like a roundabout, signalized crossings and grade separated crossing or cyclist crossings which are there. Okay. So, the motor vehicle Great separated crossing which is being talked here is not there. And when you are looking at an access streets then the traffic calming measures becomes important. And the great separated crossing for cyclists along the access roads can be one way of uh, creating a better movement. So, uh, this particular chart tries to give you an idea that depending on the type of the crossings which are there, what type of facilities can be provided in these cases. So, uh, with this we can close today's interaction and we will be continuing with the rest of the things in the case of bicycle uh, facilities or then we are going to talk about the other facilities again in that way in the future interaction. Till then goodbye and thank you for this particular interaction.